I worked on a project with Cher who had a Christmas um, album come out and we did a Christmas experience. We found that her hair, we had her UGC hair, it was gangbusters. And like, that's a touch point where everyone knows Cher's hair. Like whether you're like, I know Cher, she's older, whatever it is, there's a certain touch point that that hair was there. And like, we didn't know that until we did it. We're like, so if we want to bring back Cher on platform, we're going through with hair. <laughs> like that is the- Hair is the lead. I am excited to introduce today's guest, Jackie Bransky, the VP of Digital Innovation at Warner Records. In her role, she leads the development and implementation of the best strategies to keep Warner Records artists on the cutting edge of technology and helping them connect with the fan community in innovative ways. We had a great opportunity as Super League to collaborate with Jackie and her team to bring sounds by BB Rexa to life on Roblox and uh, are here to maybe talk a little bit about how that went, but also just in general, to get to know Jackie and what she sees happening in immersive platforms and at the intersection of Gen Z marketing, UGC gaming, and, and emerging tech. Uh, however, as always, before we start, Jackie, um, would love to hear something about you that people who work with you may not know that, um, they would enjoy being able to tell you they learned on this podcast. Well, I, I think some people know this about me as they've it's come up in conversation, but I am a, an avid Olympic watcher and um, I'm a little upset. I scheduled this while the Olympics are on live, um, but, uh, and, and I've hosted some uh, gymnastics watch parties in my office last week. So oh, that's awesome. uh, hopefully, hopefully I can pay attention and not want to you know, look over and see what's happening. But um but yes, no, huge, uh, huge Olympic fan and also massive tennis fan and just recently went to Wimbledon for the first time and it was small thing. Oh my gosh, I'm jealous. I'm a huge tennis fan and I haven't been to Wimbledon. Um, and then on the Olympics, I think we're probably recording while women's soccer is playing in the, you know, um, semifinals. So we can't talk about that, A, because when people listen to this, it's going to be over and they won't care, but also not to spoil it for each other so that we can watch later. Exactly. Um, I, well, now that we know about your Olympics passion, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your passion uh, for the intersection of music and technology. How did you get into um, you know, this area? What was it that inspired you? Maybe a, kind of a bit about your career path to this point. Yeah, I mean, I'm Born and raised in LA, and you know, my family was never in it, entertainment, but I was always drawn to it. Loved TV and film, and you know, actually, my first ten years of my career worked in film and TV, and I think I really understood storytelling and world building, and that always really, really appealed to me. Um, and very long story short, kind of fell into the music industry, and I think just having that background of understanding storytelling and the possibilities and coming to the music industry later in life being like, wow, this is broken. Um, and seeing the potential to sort of change things. And I think technology, it gives us that. Um, and so from day one, whether it be, you know, web three, AR, VR, whatever it is, I think it all comes back to the storytelling and world building. And all artists have a vision of what's in their mind. And they need to be sh able to show showcase that better. I don't feel like music videos do that. Um, so I think, you know, just as I like working on things that inspire me and I feel like there's a, such a creative touch point that will keep growing on this. I think it's still really early days and, you know, you're experimenting on this a, a ton of, as am I, but I do think all artist releases will sort of look like this in the future, whether it's on Roblox, Fortnite, or yet to be named, you know, virtual space. So. For now, let's experiment and see and see what fans want. At the end of the day, it's really about the fans and artist relationship that I find the most um, exciting. I love that you talked about world building because most people haven't really articulated that concept with those words uh, until the last few years. People talk about Roblox experiences or games or Fortnite creative maps or creative islands but they really are immersive worlds that either are designed by a native creator on the platform based on what they think is fun and will attract 
uh, an audience or they are designed based on a brand's vision. A lot of times that brand is an artist. I mean, I remember world building back in the film and television days from my past as well when, you know, I, I was able to start um, at Marvel and help really uh, bring Marvel characters to film and television companies in an elevated way in the 90s when technology finally gave studio executives the confidence that the technology would bring those characters to life on a big screen in a way that didn't necessarily have to look like the original Superman and Batman movies. Um, and so world building is often dependent upon technology. How do you sort of navigate between sort of knowing what technology can accomplish and maybe being um, uncertain as to whether you're going to be too early for what the fan is is ready to embrace? Well, my whole history has been too early. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling, by the way. Yes, yes. I guess it's a good problem because you then therefore become an expert in something no one else is. Um, I think my personality, I get bored easily. So I like risk taking. I like doing things that are different. And, you know, I think a lot of what happens in entertainment is people, you sort of rinse and repeat the same model over and over again. Um, and not saying that's bad, you know what I mean? What work, you should do what works. But I think I am just like, let's try it something differently. I'm not a crazy tech person. I just see these technologies and I'm like, that's super cool. Could we do this? And then I ask, you know, somebody who actually is in the, the thick of it and they're like, huh, we could do it like this. You know, you just kind of have this back and forth, but I think it's just like, again, I think it's my risk taking nature. Um, and that I see the music industry is broken, you know, and I think we have to to try and change things differently um, uh, and, and finding the artists and the partners who are willing to take that. That being said, if you look at Roblox and Fortnite, there's no risk being taken. This is huge numbers and massive audiences. Um, I'm sure you probably know the stats better than me, but um, gaming is now bigger uh, than music, TV, and film combined. So like, why wouldn't we be looking at these platforms? So I think that's sort of where, like my, my head's at and what um, I, I believe in. I also, I, like I said, Creatively, it's super cool. Like, why wouldn't an artist want to bring their vision to life? So it's a smart business option and also just like a smart creative vision. I mean, there's no question that, you know, music videos were the first representation of the boundless creativity inside of an artist's mind that they had not really ever had an avenue to express before they could do so with just dynamic directors and special effects and incredible set designers, and now being able to push that into a 3D space that essentially can live on indefinitely and be a world that fans can visit and experience um, has got to be sort of a scintillating idea. Um, but you, you touched upon that this might be sort of directionally something that could help fix what you're saying is a broken um, model or a broken area or industry. Can you talk a little bit about what feels broken to you? Yeah. Um, I think on the, you know, the, the biggest thing is we rely on DSPs for those who don't know DSPs are basically Spotify, Apple, Amazon, YouTube. Um, you know, you, these, all these companies have ownership of the distribution of the music. So you're stuck with what their payout royalties are, whether we can discuss at length, whether labels are part of that, you know, um, uh, payout system that it does not, is not advantageous to artists. Um, and therefore artists are, can't rely on making money off of people buying and streaming their music. They're forced to, you know, uh, tour and sell merch or find other alternate, um, revenue streams. I also think artists, you know, the discovery, like, um, you know, you're talking about music videos and I was just, um, thinking about the days where I'd run home for TRO and I'm aging myself very deeply here, but that's how I found my new music, or I found it listening to the radio. Those avenues don't exist anymore. You know, radio exists, but like, that's just for the mainstream. You know, there's not the um, the same way of like, uh, of curators. And then, as we all know, the only place people find new music right now is TikTok. Right. Uh, and, is, and that's a 15 second version of a song. So um, there's this very, this, somebody told, was telling me this story, um, totally like on the artist, but it was a big TikTok song. 
everyone goes sees the artist in the concert. The whole song plays. There's the chorus of where what was a viral on TikTok. Everyone sings to, and then they don't sing the rest of the song. They're not even listening to the. You know, they just want that that little snippet is the part they like. And they're willing yeah. to go to a concert just for that chorus sing along yeah. moment. Yeah, but I don't think that's how. That's not a healthy way. You know what I mean? And like I, uh, I think a lot of artists when it comes to what are they going to focus that energy and time on? Back in the day, it was music videos. You know, that was the way to get through. You got if you got on TRL and you did, and you spent a ton of money on your music video, and it was super cool. Like, and you know, some of those ones in back in the day, like Jamiroquai, where he's on the moving walkway harbor, they film that. Like, that's still a cult- cultural touch point. We don't have that today. Now you're just like, I gotta go get viral on TikTok or else I'm screwed. Um, so I, I, it's just, I don't think. We have the solution, but I think we need to become less reliant on these two channels for how an artist makes money and how an artist's music is discovered. So that goes back to kind of the business outcome or the business model, the opportunity to make money from, as you said, streaming or or getting getting fans to stream or listen to your music is uh, feeling limited or it's a it's an area where the revenue model struggles to support artists and concerts and merch uh, really are, you know, where artists have the opportunity or are forced to drive, you know, um, the, the majority of their value. And especially for new artists who don't have a catalog, they're not really making any money off of the use of, you know, any of their music outside of a streaming platform in film, television, commercials, you know, events, whatever it may be, unlike the boss who, you know, just became a billionaire um, because of the value of of whatever it is, 35, 40 years of, of his catalog. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so when you think about what we were able to do together, Sounds by BB Rexa, and where you'd like to see that emerge in terms of the business opportunity, what would the ideal start to look like um, for that kind of experience? Um, on Roblox or Fortnite Creative or in, you know, immersive platforms in general? Yeah, I think there's like two main ways I look at those, th- those experiences and how do you do- utilize them today. In the future, I think I look at that very differently. But right now it's one, building um, fandom on platform. And then two is finding new fans, is, you know, fan acquisition. So building fandom, BB Rexa has previously done stuff on, on Roblox. And let's keep bringing her back to the platform. You know, she, her current music, she's changed. She's working on, you know, a, a going in a dance direction. And it was like, let's showcase this new direction in Roblox, a platform where we know this music has done well, or previous music has done well there. And let's try and find that younger audience on platform, find out who they are and get more information about them. You guys have an awesome um, rewards program where we, um, you know, gave away UGC to help fans, you know, sign up for her community text list. Um, and of her list that currently, you know, exists, we got a lot of people from that experience. Um, so I think it's important to understand like, okay, there's a, we found out there is a real fan base on here and we can keep building upon it. That's where they are. Those kids are on there. You know, the stats, how much time do they spend a day? Uh, we're I'm- at about 156 minutes per day on Roblox for the average member of Gen Z. Yeah. So we're going where they are, you know what I mean? Right. And we're like, let's let's do that here. And at the same time, I think, you know, when deciding about which artists we're going to work on platform, we always, you know, we we'll always talk to the Roblox team, you know, kind of get their take and advice. But at the same time for us, it's like, okay, I think this artist and their style of music would work really well with a younger audience. Or in, you know, previous, I, I worked on a project with Cher who had a Christmas um, album come out and we did a Christmas experience um and it was more of like okay my mom this is the family friendly album we're all gonna listen to at christmas time you know dj played my christmas song um and it was like okay you probably heard this song your mom's probably playing in the car <laughs> you know right. like, like oh this is actually pretty good wait this is a really fun game i'm gonna keep listening to this and interact with this uh we found that her hair we had her ugc hair it right. was gangbusters and like that's I'll a bet. touch point where everyone knows shares hair like whether you're like i know Cher. She's older, whatever it is, there's a certain touch point that that hair was there. And like, we didn't know that until we did it. We're like, so if we want to bring back Cher on platform, 
we're going through with hair. <laughs> like that is the <laughs> hair is the lead. You know I, mean? so I think it's like you have to kind of like, OK, there's a there there. Let's bring it to the table. Let's see, you know, what the user is, what the feedback is, because you get instant feedback. And then from there, let's, sure. let's go on that. You know, I think a lot of people on Roblox have and Warner Music Group has been part. We're all, we've all done this. Mis- we've all made this mistake. And I want to give a huge shout out to Super League and and Brett, uh, a, a friend and uh, former coworker who really sold us this vision that I was like, duh. Um, but, you know, I think instead of building these experiences where an artist has to have an always on approach, um, go in where the games are, go where the kids are, find that similar demo and go in there and do a really cool experience and to be like, oh, I'm going to check this out. Maybe you wouldn't, you're playing your game. You're like, oh, OK, this is cool. What is this? And then you want to stay there versus telling someone you have to go somewhere else. You know, it's interesting. I uh, have started talking more recently with partners about the parallels between Roblox and YouTube as a marketing activation platform. I think it's a little bit different in the music space because music artists have some of the biggest channels on YouTube uh, alongside native YouTube creators. But if you're a brand and you're looking at how to connect with the uh, people who are on those platforms, if you create your own branded channel on YouTube, it's probably a place where you're going to get limited organic viewership. You're going to have to generally pay to boost the awareness of those videos. You're not going to be able to compete with the native creators or in the music space, the artists. However, if you're a brand and you decide to work with a native creator and you're going to have a presence in that creator's videos, uh, whether it's a bespoke video or an influencer shout out, you're going to get a tremendous audience and you're not going to have to buy any advertising. It's kind of similar on Roblox right now, where if you are a brand and I guess, unfortunately, at the moment, this also applies to a music artist. Um, if you are a brand and you create your own space, you really have to work hard to get people to show up. Whereas if you're able to create the right presence in an existing popular environment, we're glad that um, our sounds experience uh, was an example of what can be accomplished. Um, you can really reach uh, an enormous um, and excited audience for a much more efficient you know, amount of money and um, in a much more targeted way. So um, I think it's really smart that you know, you're looking at how um, to, to break you know, artists or how to you know, find these fans if you could sort of spin up what the business result is that you're looking for. Is it by growing fandom, you know that if an artist gets a certain you know, number of fans that a certain percentage of them are going to then you know, go to Spotify, they're gonna go to buy merch, they're gonna go to concerts. Is it almost formulaic at that point or are we not, are we not there yet? We're absolutely not there yet. Um, I've said this before, I say to the Roblox team all the time, I truly believe that an artist in the future, we'll have where artists are breaking on Roblox the way artists are breaking on TikTok. You go, you know, overnight, this song's a hit. Um, and that's what I'm really trying to build towards. Now, Roblox has some limitations. Uh, I think, you know, I most people who listen to this are aware. You do not license music. Um, you know, and there's companies like Stinger, who you guys work with, as well as we. We're trying to find ways to work around and find a way to get our licensed music into these activations and i think without getting to music industry over here you know i work at a music label our job is to monetize music you know right. selling merch and touring is really helpful for an artist and helps their their music but that's not our goal so our goal is how do we like TikTok? when you see a song that goes viral on TikTok, you then see that um our the music um the streaming goes up so that's really the goal is to have Roblox affects consumption and go up that like a song can break in that way and, and reach the zeitgeist. Um, Makes you sense. know, we've all seen, um, you know, Charlie XCX like blowing up with her Apple dance that was done on TikTok. Yes, there was other things as well as the her awesome way of saying Kamala is black. Um, but beyond that, I think <laughs> um, you see things like that where it becomes massive overnight. Um, you know, Benson Boone, one of uh, Warner Records artists, also huge on TikTok. And he's seen the success there from songs going viral and then eventually getting on radio and, re- and reaching the masses. I think that's smart. You know, we also have started um, talking with partners about the value of gaming content in general. So on TikTok, 
gaming content reaches more than 50% of the TikTok audience. It's one of the top five categories on YouTube. Roblox, in both cases, is one of the most watched games, along with Fortnite. Uh, Minecraft happens to be another one. And then there are some sort of traditional AAA games like Call of Duty that you know are usually up in the ranks, uh, Grand Theft Auto as well. Uh, that content matters to those audiences tremendously. It is a passion point. So if you are a brand, if you are a music artist, and all you're doing to connect initially to Gen Z and emerging Gen Alpha consumers who are gamers, if all you're doing is putting content on your channels that is video capturing gameplay highlights, and whether it does or does not contain your music, that's actually a terrific customer acquisition opportunity for you to reach audiences who are into gaming, bring them into your world as an artist. And, and you know, there are ways to do that without having to deploy an entire strategy on Roblox. Yeah, and maybe that is the first step, but we're totally, I, I always say, and you know, I was on a call earlier today, it's how do we have our artists into gaming culture? You know what I mean? And building a Roblox or Fortnite experience takes you, that's a whole other level, but you know, it's like, what are those smaller things before we go and invest that money and that time? Is it just something simple where you get, you know, you hit up some Roblox um, influencers or you, you know, Twitch uh, gamers as well as streams and include, let them, you know, give them the, the music, include that, maybe have your artist join in and play a game if they're a gamer, obviously it's so much easier that way and see if there there's something there. You know, I spent a lot of time working on that sort of stuff um, and think it's really important. Again, limitations. So on Twitch, they don't license music. So you can only do the thing as long. So then it's like, okay, right. well, we need to make sure, again, we go and we chop up this content and then we go see it and then we go have it on tick, live on TikTok and YouTube where they do license music and include it. So it's like, you're always like, there's always a strategy and a plan within the limitations. And that's the hard part. And it's like, I love it. It's problem solving. It's like, let's get creative and figure it out. You know what I mean? Again, if you're not trying and trying to figure this out, I think it's a missed opportunity. And you know who suffers? Artists. Um, so, but again, I think it's, we don't have like the crazy amount of gamers on our roster. So it's really getting creative on how to integrate that into these spaces and worlds. I was going to um, actually ask you, you mentioned artists and obviously that's, you know, their enthusiasm, interest, willingness is really at the center of whatever you're able to do on these platforms. Is it an uphill climb with artists? Is it just a case by case basis? Do artists generally understand how important gaming is? Where do they fall on the spectrum? It's totally case by case. We'll have certain, you know, artists come to us and be like, I want to do all these things. Then you'll have an artist like BB where we first, you know, they brought her the first Roblox that, um, um, opportunity. And when the second one came around with you guys with sounds, it was a no brainer to her. She was like, I love it. She's like, this thing's huge. I didn't realize, you know what I mean? So I think it's, you know, that push and pull, you have to kind of show why, um, you know, why these things matter, you know? And again, there's another artist I've worked with and she goes, she goes, I fucking love Roblox. She's like, I know I'm too old to be playing it, but I love it. I want to do anything there. You know what I mean? So you're going to get yeah. those ones where you have to kind of sell them a bit. Um, or is it, you know, bringing a really creative opportunity that like you can bring this vision that you weren't able to do before, you know, we, um, previous, I've actually, when I keep bringing up BB, but before she did her Roblox experience, she had a song um, uh, that came out on 420 with Snoop Dogg about getting high in space. And we were just really wanted to bring this experience to life. And I've always had this for a couple of years before I always had like a virtual hot box I always had it really appealing to me. And I just like couldn't get this out of my head. And we couldn't go to Roblox, you know, because of different issues. So we built it ourselves. We built a virtual environment that lived for two weeks that where you got to you know, it was all weed themed in space on a spaceship. Right. Um, we reskinned it two weeks later. So it was like, I think again, you know, that was a creative idea where she's like, why wouldn't I do this? You know what I mean? Um, yep. That's the other thing is like, there's, I think the the creative outlet that I don't think gets talked about enough. Uh, everyone just thinks about the business side of it all, but like there's really cool creative stuff you can do. Again, with Share with Christmas, we did an evil elf was, you know, naughty and messing around with Christmas. You helped Share to save Christmas. That's cute and fun. Like what, you know, uh, sure. with Ego, we did like a, her whole album was about being um, really thinking about climate change. So we kind of built our own animal crossing or farm bill, whatever you want to call it, build and plant trees. And we plant uh, however many, there was a certain amount of trees we planted in the real world that coincided with the amount you built in the virtual That's world. That's great. Find those things together. And again, that was an idea I've 
I've always wanted to do and had in my mind. And then the opportunity came with an artist who had that vision and now a platform to go do that. You mentioned that there was an opportunity that didn't make sense for Roblox. You built it yourself. Yes. Uh, Web-based immersive spaces. They're not necessarily any easier. I wouldn't do it to, again. <laughs> you wouldn't do it again. Okay, so no. is that because it was too difficult to get people to show up for it? Was it too expensive? Was there no evidence of engagement or you know business benefit or all the above? I think at the end of the day, I think it's, we have to, that was a, it was a different circumstance. It financially made sense. Um, and um, I think I want to go where, where the, the audience is, you know what I mean? I think um, that is an experience that is just for super fans, which I think is super important, highly valuable, zero regrets. Um, but I think you want to catch a wider net. Um, and again, it's funny because I said at the top, I think that's sort of the problem with the music industry is you have to sort of go for the masses because that's what our platforms allow us to. Um, right. But I just think we're at a place right now where, you know, certain artists can have those bespoke one of a kind experiences. The superstars totally can and they should and they should be able to, you know, own the data of their own audience, have it in their own ecosystem. Um, but I think for now, that's that's just not realistic. That's not a a way to make real change over time. And then we have to so, work with what we want. So the idea of an emerging artist trying to attract today's, you know, gamers who love and live in and communicate and socialize in 3D spaces, if you're not known to enough of that demographic and you create a web-based 3D space, believing that that's a spot where people will start to spend some time and get to know you, it's a real battle compared to finding the right expression of that idea in a place where users already are hanging out. Yeah, I think it's a mix of going where you already are. And at the same time, on the artist side, the upkeep and making it engaging and what you have to do to have an always on approach is so hard. I mean, at the end of the day, an artist's job is to make music, you right. know, and perform it. Let's, let's baseline. You're now required to be an influencer, create all this content, be a brand, be a personality, you know, a manufacturer of goods. All these things are now required to do. Now we're having you do another thing. Right. Unless you want to do it. But like, I think the expectation is really hard. And that's, again, I feel like I'm sounding like a commercial for you guys. Why well, I enjoyed it to sound like <laughs> it was two weeks. It was creatively really awesome. And there was no, it was a, a moment in time that we got to do something cool. And she can go in and out as she pleases. And it's not an always on approach. It's just, it's not, it's not realistic right now. And a brand can do that. Still hard, but you have teams of people. Like every artist is approving every single thing in these experiences. That's one person in the approval process. You know what I right. mean? Like, um, Brett, who's a good friend of mine who has not worked in the music business before. And, you know, having him sort of explain the nuances and differences of having a brand client versus an artist client, you know, he would love when I say, okay, great. I love that idea. He's like, oh, so we're approved. I was like, no, no, no. I got to go to the no. management and the artist. Like, here's just my suggestion, you know? Sure. Um, so I think that was like a very interesting process that a lot of people don't realize. And everyone's like, oh my God, your job must be amazing. It's so fun. And you're like, I I'm just here. Help I'm a facilitator at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like sure. I'm trying to bring cool ideas and opportunities, but I don't, well, I'm never going to like the artist needs to be, wants to do it. and needs to be leaned in. And, uh, the, Fans today can sniff out, you know, when it's not authentic. And I think that's super important because they want it, need to be engaged and be excited by it. You know, BB was like all in. And I think it makes a difference. That's what, that, that, I mean, you're right. That's what you need. You have to have, whether it's a brand, an artist, a personality, if they really want to make something work, then you're going to be successful. If they're sort of half-heartedly interested and it's kind of a, you know, uh, a second tier project, it, it just won't come to life the right way. And, and I guess speaking of things that have come to life the right way, you're obviously a student of um, emerging experiences and technologies. There has been so much attempted in the music space, whether it has been on, a, on an existing platform or something that's created that's bespoke or even a live experience that you know really cleverly um, weaves in digital um, or virtual technology. Are there any examples of activations that you did 
didn't have anything to do with, whether they were inside Warner or outside of Warner, where you look at it and you're like, wow, they nailed it. I would have loved to have been involved in that. Or it just inspired you in a particular way to pursue new opportunities in your role. Yeah, I think obviously that you have to talk about the Travis Scott Fortnite experience because I think, granted, it was during deep COVID. And that's other things like if these things didn't take off during COVID, we're of an uphill battle or we weren't doing it right. But that really sparked sort of that light bulb for everyone of like what an artist can do in a virtual space. You know what I mean? I think the co these concerts still, in terms of numbers, do the best. But I really, I really want to see more of those experiences, environments where the music's included and the visual is there, where you're not relying on an artist having to do another performance. Like, I don't think it should just be like doing a virtual report performance should be the only way these things can, you know, get that mass audience. But I think that was really like what what kind of sparked it for for a lot of us. Um, and then uh, I didn't work on it, but Atlantic and, you know, people I work with here over on the, the corporate war music groups, I just did, you know, a Don Toliver experience um, and did a, you know, a creative map for that in Fortnite. And I thought that was awesome. I mean, Don is the, I was very jealous it wasn't a Warner Records artist, but, you know, Don was the right artist to experiment and do that for the first time because he loves Fortnite. He plays Fortnite. He's in that world. He's friends with the different Twitch streamers. He was like, I'm going to release my music in this game and had a whole strategy behind it. So, you know, just be, I know a lot of the details of the process of that because it's, you know, people I work with closely. Sure. But um, it was really inspiring that, you know, the art, it was the artist lean in uh, is super important. I thought it came out. It looked great. But um, again, that's that was best case scenario. I think there's it's a tough one. And I think if you're just going in there and trying to sell some UGC or just trying to get a, a moment, no, it should be like a creative vision. Are you releasing music? Are you? treating your fans to something special. Are you doing Easter eggs for maybe a, a current release? Like it's, it's gotta be more than just, you know, marketing 101. We, uh, we feel the same way. In fact, more of our conversations now with partners are about how Roblox needs to connect into whatever you're doing as a brand or personality or artist in your overall marketing activity. If you're looking at Roblox as this separate activation opportunity, unless you're really trying to create a game, and there are some brands who have tried to and successfully or unsuccessfully created games on the platform. Their IP makes a ton of sense. And it's a lot easier to take a risk of creating that kind of a game than to do a deal with Activision or Electronic Arts to go through a huge licensing process and hope that you can hit at a AAA level. There are very few examples of branded IP that really are successful at that in yeah. which uh, compared to being able to get into Roblox, which takes much less money and much less time. Okay, looking back at the Travis Scott concert and everything that's emerged since then, numbers of 30 million visits or whatever it's been, do you see a future where inside Roblox or Fortnite Creative or some platform player to be named later that that type of experience could be ticketed so that it is actually a revenue generator for an artist? I don't know. I, I think I think it should be free. Okay. I think it should be marketing play. I think it's like a, unless you're doing a full call. So like think about it this way. Like think about YouTube, you know, um, Warner Records artist, and I'm a big fan of Rufus Soul. I've watched their Joshua Tree, live in Joshua Tree um, concert a gazillion times. That's free on YouTube. You yeah. know, Dessa, I, I guess I'm giving away my taste of music here. Odessa recently just did a ticketed live concert, you know what I mean? But it's like a full production. So the live in Joshua Tree was about three or four songs and then Odessa is their full concert. So, and you right. have a digital download, you can watch it. Anyway. So I think it just, I feel like you have to think about like that, but no, in a virtual world, I don't think it should be ticketed for now unless, let's see where technology goes. I, I don't know. Um, I think maybe it should be ticketed and you get, you know, is it an emote? Is it merch? Do you earn something or maybe... My my best case scenario is you earn a seat, you earn your ticket into the concert, and only people sure. who did sort of actions on platform are then allowed to go there. Um, a lot of I work on a bunch of different stuff, you know, in emerging technology and digital and testing and new things. I love the idea of rewarding fans for their participation. Like you're already going to do this thing, let me we're going to like let, we're going to give this to you. You know what I mean? So I think that's really important the way I see this, you know, and want to keep driving that. And I think. Roblox has the potential to do that more and more. And same with Fortnite, both of them or any of them or whatever yet to be named game. <laughs> or, yes, exactly. 
Yeah. Um, the one thing I wanted to say that uh, you touched on is I think I can't wait to the day where when you're thinking about your mar an artist marketing rollout and you think about, okay, what's my music video? What is my social content? What is my merch going to be? What is my live going to be all around this project? Now, what is my, for lack of a better word, metaverse strategy going to be? You know what I mean? Is sure. it that with this single we're going to release this emote or this UGC or do this pop-up experience? And then when this single and this album, like, is this going to be part of my tour stop? You know what I mean? Like, whatever it is, I think it's going to be a fully integrated plan. Um, and I really look forward to the day that we get to do that. I think it'll be really fun. But again, yeah, I think, you know, we work so closely with the team at Roblox and as closely as we can with the team at Fortnite Creative. Um, it's not as big of a focus for them on brand partnerships, but, um, you know, right now. With the music, I think there are. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. Well, no, no, I think it's fair. <laughs> Look, in, in, in Fortnite Battle Royale, they are more advanced in their thinking around music than Roblox is as a platform for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one licensed music, one doesn't. Right. That's a simple way to put it. Yes, the, that was my, my PC way so they don't yell at me. Uh, they might yell at me and that's okay. Um, I've been yelled at by Roblox, it's fine. I think if you're in the space and you haven't been, you haven't been pushing boundaries and pushing okay. boundaries to your point at the very beginning, taking risks, that's you know a great way to achieve new things. And if you're not gonna take those risks, then you should just try to achieve old things. What you just described in terms of um, the marketing plan uh, like if you have a marketing plan for TikTok or you have a marketing plan for YouTube, at least as a music artist, chances are most of that is organic. You're going to spend your own time and energy, maybe a partner like a label's um, money to create content. And then that content's going to get onto those platforms. And because of your notoriety and your marketing strategy and your social media growth tactics, you have a chance of that content starting to be seen by millions or tens of millions of people. As this opposed is, to- This is content. Right. You know, we're, uh, I'm part of the digital marketing team, but I'm kind of like a team by myself, But and they all have rosters and focus on the digital strategy of artists. And pretty much no matter what project I work on, they're like, oh, we needed another piece of content. You know what I mean? Like. The very basic kind of hyper, which is uh, not to devalue the work I do, but at the end of the day, that's what artists is. You just need constant content. The expectation we have on artists to keep doing that is a bit unfair, but again, that's the, the system we're now in. Well, so when that content gets created and it goes onto these channels, I don't think that there's an enormous amount of money that's spent to boost that content. You're really relying upon the artist's organic presence. Maybe for something new, you'll give it a bit of a, of a starting point, um, but you're, you're relying upon the power of the content. And right now that is hard to do on Roblox or Fortnite Creative. So that future that you're talking about where you think to yourself as an artist and the team is around the table and they're saying, hey, I'm gonna release this UGC and this emote and have this presence, um, it, it, it has to be connected to some type of distribution, probably that doesn't require a, a large paid marketing budget. Um, and I think that's not to say that those platforms don't deserve to be generating revenue based on everything that they spend in order to bring huge audiences to the table for a brand or an artist. But there's sort of that sweet spot where if they can generate their revenue from sort of organic ways that either brands want to have a presence or consumers are behaving. And in the Roblox and Fortnite creative world, there's money spent by consumers, which is very different from TikTok. Um, then you can find that middle ground where an organic presence just has an opportunity to be discovered and successful. Um, that is a future that I think we would both love to see uh, come to pass. Yeah, no, and when I was on a call with Robux last week, we're like, hey, like, can we get like a, a follow, uh, like, you know, s s feature in Roblox. So like when an artist releases something, we can then post in there, you know what I mean? They have their their fan groups, which look like a Reddit thread basically, or like an old school Facebook group. Um, and, you know, we've thought about, do we go build those up? Is that a realistic strategy when an artist says something? You know, I'm like, I don't think we have the answer, but like Roblox seemed for the first time open. Cause we're like, otherwise, like, are we saying, should you go follow on Instagram or go on Spotify and take them off platform? Like, no, we should keep right. them on platform, help us give an option 
to you know find a way to message you know to these people because like again we now have because of the the rewards integration we know which fans sign up for a community text list who try to participate in this experience but if we didn't do that we wouldn't know anything you know what i mean and data right. is key here and it was kind of funny when you're just talking about TikTok and um and then versus uh which doesn't monetize the way roblox says TikTok's just selling your data. Whether we think that's good or bad, they're monetizing you. You know what I mean? And that's yes. what most the platforms do. So here at least it's your they're that's how they're generating the revenue. Like uh Walmart. Well I don't know. Well, it's straight it's it's a little well, bit more straightforward. I mean, I don't well, think anybody's under any delusions as to how they are being monetized once they reach a point of awareness based on how old they are. Um, but, uh, sure. Yeah. On Roblox, you're charging consumers for a lot of their activity on TikTok, You're leveraging their time um, yeah. and their, and the information about them. And let's be honest between TikTok, Roblox and Fortnite and, and Minecraft, which again, doesn't really have a music and uh, easy music integration. Um, the, the engagement is, is insane. You know what I mean? It's like these audience. And I think that's, that's really the key to understanding that you used to have a, the music audience was the engaged audience pushing culture, and this was important. Gaming culture now is so again. That's where the opportunity lies. Again, going where they are, you know. And that's well. Before I ask you just one one final question to, on that point, I say this, uh, but I think it bears repeating regularly: the amount of time spent by an average member of Gen Z on Roblox plus Fortnite in a given day is larger than the average amount of time spent in that same day by an average member of Gen Z on TikTok plus YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, people don't think about that. Brands don't think about that very often. There's more time spent in these gaming platforms than on the biggest social video platforms on the planet in a given day. And um, for those people who have used TikTok and Instagram all the time, I'm not, I'm half paying attention. I'm doing, I'm always doing something while on. So I'm watching TV. I am at a red light. Mom, don't listen. Um, I stand in line to get coffee. I am on a work call. Like you, the you're. It's so half ass. You know what I mean? Right. Um, where I think these games, you're you're fully immersed. Um, That's right. So, uh, and, and listen, at the end of the day, it's you have where TikTok. I'm reading tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow. And I don't know if you've read that, but uh, you know, not yet. Oh, on my really, list. Yes. Uh, but just thinking about you know previous games that have come before and like one in the book. Because it kind of it starts in the '90s, um, and thinking about where you like the chat ability or these you know open worlds and stuff, and that that kind of coming around, you're like, wow, there was a time where gaming was just like you would just sit and play the game. There was no you know conversing with your friends or the content pieces or like uh, it's just crazy how far we've come. Um, and it was just it was just something that I was thinking about while reading, and that was sort of interesting. And I'm not a big gamer at all. Like I'm looking forward to playing. Mario Kart with my nephew. He just got a switch for his birthday and I'm ready. There to you go. Keep it's it, good. keep it contained. Keep it basic. Yes. You know, it's going to take him like one week of playing that game and he's going to kick my ass. So, oh, uh, I, I mean, if you last a week, I want to hear <laughs> how you got there. I was really, I was like, I, I was like, shit, I need to like play him today. Cause I think even tomorrow he's going to get better than me. Um, and he called me yesterday through my sister's phone. It was like, I hear you think you're going to beat me in Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like, that my job right now to come and school you. <laughs> I think that's perfect. I mean, that is what an aunt and nephew relationship should be all yes. about. We usually like to leave the audience with one or two takeaways. I think we've covered a lot of the um, vision that you see and what you hope for in these immersive platforms and from emerging tech in general. So instead, let's just, um, I'll, I'll ask you, what do you think, you know, someone who wants to be on the side of innovation inside of either um, a, a music company, a record label, or a media company in general, what is it that they should be focused on in order to make innovation a potential career path? Um, obviously keeping up with the trends, you know, um, I've worked in corporate environments for a while and a lot of people are scared of change. So, you're going to have to convince a lot of people and, you know, sometimes look for that smaller win or that smaller moment to build upon. It's really frustrating at times. You know what I mean? I feel like, you know, selling these ideas and, uh, you know, talking with somebody like you 
or my friends at other companies. And when you're with people who just get it, you're like, oh my God, why can't I just be talking to you people all day long? I think it's really important to be able to explain why these, why this is important and why you need to be doing this and go test, get people to find people who will pay for it. (laughs) So you don't get in trouble when you've spent too much money. Um, uh, You know what I mean? I think you have to get really, really creative. Um, And, you know, sort of, as I said at the top, I think it's a, the personality to do innovation. I think, you know, it's really easy in the corporate world to say no or like, well, not this time, maybe next time, you know, and here you you have to fight for like, no, this is the time. This is the time to go try that. And then if not, tweak that idea and pitch it to somebody else again and just keep going. It's also a bit of it's frustration meets relentlessness and um, somebody who gets bored easily who just wants to go try new things. I think that's fantastic. So look, this has been a, a ton of fun. Thank you uh, again. This is with Jackie Bransky, VP of Digital Innovation at Warner Records. She is was already before this conversation, but has just reestablished her position as my favorite executive in the music business. Um, just a, a terrific conversation, tons of great insights. It's been a real pleasure. So thanks for joining us. Of course, thanks so much. And I love chatting with you every time, whether or not we're being recorded or not. Uh, I think your insights are brilliant. And you've already talked, uh, just from the handful of conversations we've had, you taught me a lot about this space that is invaluable. So this is this is the guy. Go listen to him. He knows everything. That's very kind of you. Okay, thanks again. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. You can listen to the full unedited version on your favorite podcast platform. Please remember to like and subscribe for updates. And we look forward to having you back for our next episode. <laughs>